So in this section, we are basically going to discuss the current voltage relationship of a capacitor. Now to obtain the current voltage relationship of a capacitor, we first of all consider the first equation, that is charge is equal to the capacitance of the capacitor times the voltage applied across it. So that happens to be the first equation. Now what we are going to do here is that we are going to differentiate this equation with respect to time. So what we do is we are going to have the Q, the T, and that is equal to D dt of C times V. Now you realize here that the time rate of change of charge is equal to current. So we have the Q dt to be I, that is the instantaneous current, and that is equal to because C, which is the capacitance of the capacitor, is a constant, we are going to pull out the constant so that we have C times dV dt. So basically, the instantaneous current is equal to C times dV dt. Now let's call this our second equation. And basically, this is the current voltage relationship of the capacitance of a capacitor. Now, Assuming we want to have the graph of this, then basically this is the current voltage relationship graph of a capacitor. So here we have a graph of dV dt against I, and then we have this straight line to be the slope, and the slope is the capacitance of the capacitor. Now, assuming that we want to compare this equation to the equation of a straight line that is given by y equals ax plus b. Now, from this equation, comparing the two equations, we see that y corresponds to i, we have x corresponds to dv dt, this is dv dt, and this is i, and then you realize that the gradient a is equal to c, that is the capacitance, so the gradient or the slope is the capacitance, and then we have b to be equal to zero, because we have no constant here, the constant is zero. Okay, now in this case, we can say that considering equation 2, the capacitance C of the capacitor is equal to I divided by dV dt. So basically, this is the equation that we can have for the capacitance C. So this is equal to I divided by dV dt. Now, moving away from equation 2. We can still have the current voltage relationship of a capacitor in terms of voltage. We consider this same equation, that is equation 2, that is given by I is equal to C times dV dt. And what are we going to do? We are going to multiply both sides of the equation by dt. So we can have the second step. We can have the second step, that is I times dt and that is equal to c dv dt times dt so at this point dt cancels out dt and then we are left with i dt and that is equal to c times dv now we want to make dv stand alone so we divide through by c so that we have dv that is equal to i times dt divided by c. Now, because 1 over c is a constant, we can basically rewrite it as 1 over c times i dt. Now, at this point, we are going to integrate both sides of the equation with respect to time. So, we integrate this, we are going to have v and then that is equal to, we are going to integrate this from time t naught to t. Now because 1 over c is a constant, we pull out the constant and then we have 1 over c times the integral from t naught to t of i dt and then we introduce, so we add plus v of t naught. Now this v of t naught is said to be the constant of integration and it basically represents the initial voltage across the capacitor at time t equals zero. So basically, 
this is the voltage current relationship of a capacitor in terms of voltage now let's call this our third equation now the next thing is that we want to derive a formula for the instantaneous power delivered to a capacitor so for the instantaneous power delivered to a capacitor we have instantaneous power p is equal to the instantaneous voltage times the instantaneous current now we are going to have p is equal to v times we know i to be equal to c times dv dt that is from equation 2 so we are going to put that here we are going to have c times dv dt and because c is a constant we are going to pull out the constants so we have c times v dv dt so this is the formula for the instantaneous power delivered to a capacitor let's call this equation 4 now to the next one we also want to derive a formula for the energy stored in a capacitor so for the energy stored in a capacitor we are going to have w that is the energy stored in a capacitor and that is obtained by this being equal to the integral from t naught to t of the instantaneous power dt so we are going to call this equation that is equation for the instantaneous power and that is going to be we have this to be equal to the integral from t naught to t of c times v dv dt times dt so dt cancels out dt and then we have the energy to be equal to the integral now at this point we are left with dv so we are going to integrate with respect to v so we are going to have the integral from v naught that is the initial voltage to v the final voltage of c times v dv now because c is a constant we are going to pull out the constant so we are going to have c times the integral from v naught to v of v dv now at this point at this point we perform the integration and then we are going to have c times the integral of v is v squared over 2 and then we have the lower limit to be v naught upper limit to be v now at this point we are going to make an assumption we are going to assume that we are going to assume that the initial voltage across the capacitor v naught is equal to zero so in that case we are going to have the energy stored in the capacitor to be equal to c divided by 2 1 over 2 is a constant so we pull it out therefore we have c over 2 and that is equal to we input the upper limit we have v square minus the lower limit we have zero square and that is basically that is basically w equals c over 2 times v square and this can be written as w equals 1 over 2 times c times v square 1 over 2 times c times v square now let's call this equation 5 now also from this equation since we know that the charge q is equal to the capacitance times the voltage across it we can say that the voltage v is equal to the charge divided by the capacitance hence from this equation we can have w to be equal to 1 over 2 times c times v square v square becomes q square over c square so we have q square divided by c square so c cancels out the square and then we are left with w equals 1 over 2 times q square over c let's call this equation 6 so basically these are the formulas we are going to use to solve questions in the next lesson
Thanks so much for watching and see you in the next lesson.